and we're going to take you through three different bathrooms that we've recently completed and what we did um, to evaluate the before issues and then how we solved those issues. So hopefully you can relate with one of these bathrooms um, as we walk through. We're gonna start with the first bathroom, um, which is a conservative size bathroom. This is our small hallway bathroom. If you live in Old Leewood or Prairie Village or Kansas City, Missouri, you might be able to relate to a very efficient size five by seven space or maybe slightly larger like this one is. Um, it did have a linen closet that we were able to um, modify into its purpose. So these spaces are always interesting to photograph <laughs> on the, on the uh, before side. Um, but you can see it was a single vanity. It was a single toilet and it was a single tub shower. And then there was a linen closet adjacent to that shower tub area. Um, this house was 1960s era and probably had not been updated. So, um, you know, the client was using this space, but it was not fully functioning. Um, there was some ventilation issues, so a lot of moisture buildup. The wallpaper was peeling. You can see some moisture issues in that bathroom where some mold um, was starting and it just was not functioning and it wasn't easy to clean anymore. So um, they brought us in with a list of criteria points that they wanted to do to not only update the aesthetic, but also address some function issues in that bathroom. So listed here, a few of the pain points, um, too many doors. So you can see as you entered the bathroom, there was a two foot four door from the hallway space that conflicted when it stood open. So you can imagine most of the time in a hall bathroom scenario, the door is gonna stand open a good portion of the day unless it's in use. So when that door stood open, you actually could not access the linen cabinet. So we knew we had to address the door situation. Um, there simply was not, room, not enough room. So it was a tight bathroom. Again, it was a little bit more oversized than your typical five by seven bathroom because it had that linen closet, but it just, it was tight. There was not enough clearance in between the fixtures. And it was dated. I mean, again, 1960s, um, we knew we wanted to put some materials in that were upgraded and better functioning. Um, the wish list that they had, they are a retired couple and their washer dryer that um, they've used for 30 years in this house was in the basement. And one thing that they came to us with, with was if we're going to stay in this house and age in place, we wanna have a main floor laundry. And it doesn't necessarily need to be a full size laundry. It doesn't necessarily need to be a full blown laundry room, but it would be nice to be able to have that on our main living, um, main bedroom floor. So this hall bath is adjacent to their bedroom. Um, so we knew we wanted to look at a washer dryer option in this bathroom. And then also important to keep some linen storage. So as we look at converting that linen cabinet to washer dryer, how can we maintain linen storage for um, the bedrooms and for the bathroom? So this is our new plan and we're looking at this um, as an overhead view and you'll see the washer dryer is now in that linen closet. Um, we have completely redesigned the opening. It's not as deep. Um, we've also implemented a new pocket door. So no longer do we have the door conflict from the entry. We've also widened that door. So instead of it being a two four, now it's a two foot eight. So it gives some better opening. Um, and again, with this being a hall bathroom, most of the time that door is going to sit open. So now with it being a pocket door, it goes completely back into the wall. So giving a much better sense of space. Um, we also installed a narrower vanity. Um, and that was something that we talked long about because we're giving up a little bit of storage space for the feeling of more space in terms of function. And so what we wanted to do is make sure that we weren't losing storage. So with the older vanities from the 1960s, they're typically about a 30 inch tall vanity height. This one coming in is closer to 36. So the nice thing is we didn't feel we were losing storage because we were gaining it as that elevation of the vanity was taller. Adjacent to that vanity, we built in a linen cabinet. So again, I mentioned as we took that linen cabinet out, that closet out and utilized it for the washer dryer, we had to make sure we had some kind of linen storage put back in the bathroom. So we actually recessed 
part of that linen, so you see that dashed line going back into the stud space. Um, and so we're able to capture some additional space to make it functional. So that serves as towel storage, as um, bedding sheet storage, and then also for the washer dryer. So the, um, you know, the soap and detergent and um, dryer sheets, that kind of thing is stored in that cabinet. Um, and then um, a new tub shower, of course, in that space and a new taller toilet. Some of the design selections that we looked at were um, the important, the priority part of it was to look for low maintenance materials, um, things that were easy to clean um, and long lasting. So one material that we utilized um, on the top there is a subway tile imprinted on a solid surface material called onyx. So there are, um, it's not individual tiles, it's a sheet good material made out of composite and they actually have different imprinted panel material choices that you can, you can utilize. So we chose a classic subway tile. Um, you can get it matte or gloss. This one was a gloss finish just to reflect the light. And so that's what is in the shower alcove setting on top of the tub. So, Megan, what is the benefit of having that one piece instead of the individual tiles? So it's a cost benefit. It's a lot less labor involved. So we had some cost savings, but also just the maintenance. And that's what they were after. Um, they weren't looking for, since it's a hall bathroom, they weren't looking for something aesthetically to go, wow, this is unbelievable. It was more like, we want something practical, easy to clean, that we don't have to worry about grout. And of course, in that former picture of the um, before, you know that she was scrubbing that grout for years trying to get that clean, and she was kind of over it. So we wanted to utilize something that she wouldn't have to worry about. Um, and so it's a great solution for that space. So it comes in a three piece kit. And so you have the back wall panel and then the two side panels. And then there's a whole host of accessories that you can utilize as far as um, recess uh, shower storage or um, corner seats, um, all kinds of options within that lineup. So that is a material called Onyx made in St. Mary's, Kansas. Um, some other items that we selected in the design process, the countertop material is quartz, um, which is an engineered stone material, very popular in the kitchen and bath industry because of the no maintenance, because it does not scratch. Um, it's very durable, comes in a host of colors. Um, so the exciting thing is you can get the look of marble, but you don't have the maintenance of marble because real marble is beautiful, but it tends to have high maintenance. So again, um, they wanted something that looked aesthetically um, pleasing, but didn't have the maintenance issues. And we did an undermount rectangular sink in white that has a nice sloped bottom for drain. And then we used um, the Moen collection, the Dartmoor, which is absolutely just a beautiful collection of um, faucetry and shower fixtures. I would call this a transitional style. So it's not super traditional, not super modern, but right in the middle. So I feel like a lot of people can identify with that selection. Um, and then this client loves blue. I think every room in our house is maybe a shade of blue. So we knew on the walls that that was gonna be an easy choice um, for the wall color. We also show some of the hardware that we utilize for a really nice um, pole that's easy to handle. Um, no outside edges to snag or catch on as you're getting ready at the vanity area. And then we did a little glass knob because this not only functions as their hallway bathroom, it also functions as their powder bath. So they don't have another half bath in their home. So we wanted to do something that was kind of fun um, as an entertaining bath as well. And these are the after photos of the bathroom, which just turned out beautiful um, and gives, you, gives her tons of storage, great drawer storage. So you can see the sink is offset. And the reason we did that is so that she has an expansive counter area because this is the bathroom she gets ready for in the morning. She uses this bathroom because the master in her home is a very small space and it's a one person. So her husband uses that bathroom and she likes to go in here and use this bathroom when she gets ready in the, in the morning. On the floor, it is a porcelain tile, again, made to look like marble in a 12 by 12, very classic pattern. Um, and then you'll see um, on the picture on the left, you can see the linen storage. So 
Um, you see on the right side, that's that tall linen cabinet that only sticks out from the wall, maybe proud about four inches, but then it recesses back into the stud cavity another four inches. So um, yes, it's not terribly deep, but it's enough to give her towel storage and like I said, laundry storage. The doors on the left were ordered along with the cabinets. So those were, um, they're not room doors, they're actually cabinet doors. So they're a lot more slender um, and they don't take up as much room. And so that's the double door on the left that you see that conceals the washer dryer. Um, washers and dryers, you know, have specific venting requirements. Um, and this particular set was really nice in that we didn't have to put any ventilation on the facade of those doors. Depends on the set. So, you know, when we get into designing these spaces, we're looking heavily at the washer dryer specifications and what's required in terms of the venting and then what's required for the doors on the front. Um, obviously when it's in use, you know, a lot of times she'll leave one door open, um, but when it's not in use, obviously this is how the bathroom is, is used. And then you can see back behind, she used a shower curtain and rod um, and the panels, the onyx panels go all the way up to the ceiling. We also did new lighting. Um, so we put in some new recess pan lighting and vanity lighting, and then of course our GFI outlet at the, at the vanity for power needs. Um, and that's a really good photo of that onyx material, which really, from this standpoint, to me, it looks like it's subway tile with a white grout. So it finishes out really, really nice and looks very clean and classic um, in, that, um, in that view. It does. You would never know that's not regular subway tile. It's beautiful. Right. right. And I love how clean those doors are too on the washer and dryer. But yeah, so you can see one's propped open. Um, and again, it's, it's a three quarter panel versus like an inch and a half full size door. So a lot less cumbersome. And then that tile extends into that washer dryer area and they are stacked. The washer dryer assembly are stacked. So now we'll go on to the mid-size bathroom. This is a master bath and it is an ensuite, so it's off of a bedroom. Um, this particular bath is in Sunset Hill off of the plaza. And um, we have a, a couple that use this bathroom together. And their home is very traditional, as many of those are. You can imagine it's a beautiful stone Kansas City, Missouri um, house. And the before photos, um, which are going to be so surprising, um, was extremely modern. So at some point before they moved in, somebody had renovated their bathroom, but they went with a very modern approach. Um, and so what we wanted to do with this bathroom is take it back to more of a traditional feel that is more in keeping with the style of the home. So these are the before photos. You can see it was a laminate counter with Corian countertops. We had some radius details. That entire glass mirror facade was all medicine cabinet storage. And yes, it was great storage, but um, she needed some better um, upgrades in terms of how she was storing her items. Um, there were two vanities. And so on the very left photo, that was her side. And then on the very right photo, he had was probably about a 42 inch wide vanity kind of tucked into that little niche. So um, then they had a large whirlpool tub with a shower um, combination. Um, beyond that room, which I know it's kind of hard to see, but you'll see the door opening into another room. Um, there was actually a toilet and a bidet location, which they did not use the bidet. They didn't have a desire to have a bidet. And the space that that separate room was really taking up and utilizing um, just didn't leave them that much openness in the bathroom. So we knew we wanted to open up those walls and do away with all that. Um, some of the fun features of this space is the fact that it does have that vaulted ceiling detail with those skylights. Uh, which is absolutely beautiful. But again, that space was pretty choppy and it wasn't taking advantage of that natural light. Um, so you can see the as-built here where that long stretch of vanity on her side on the left, um, his side on the right, the tub shower with the full wall um, separating the vanity and the tub shower, and then that whole room dedicated to the toilet and the bidet um, with no natural light in that space. So it's just an awkward layout. Um, and the vanity space, yes, there was good length to the vanities, but they just, the cabinets weren't functioning very well. 
So the wish list for this client is to have a separate freestanding tub. So she's always loved the idea of having something more aesthetic, a freestanding, um, beautiful, classic piece, a larger shower that functions better, and then a double vanity approach um, with two sinks. So the new plan, as we show here, um, did include a pocket door entry. We moved the entry. So you can see there's a note, it says door closes in. So we actually rerouted the traffic pattern um, to um, the other side of the space. Um, double vanity was implemented on that back wall, um, a new freestanding tub. And then the shower basically lays out where that old toilet and the day room were. So we re relocated the toilet. Now it's not in a separate room, but there is a wall that provides some privacy. Um, and it was more important to these clients to get a separate tub, separate shower, than to have a whole room dedicated to the toilet. Um, we also knew we wanted to implement some hamper storage um, and a shower bench with some recess storage for shampoos. Um, so we were working through all of those as we created that new design. Um, you'll see another door was closed in before on that toilet bidet room. There was another door going into another bedroom. Um, for what reason, I'm, I'm not really sure. Um, but there was no purpose and nobody was using that door. So we closed in that door. So now it's a more private bathroom. These were some of the design selections that we utilized for that space. Against I mentioned the freestanding tub, which was cast iron. You can get those in lots of different materials. Um, you can get them out of cast stone. They come in acrylic. Um, so there's lots of options. This client chose to go with cast iron because it, again, it's more in keeping with the style of home that they have. Um, on the faucet collection, we went with Kohler's Artifacts, which is a very architectural line. Again, bringing some of those design aesthetics into this home. And on the countertops, we went with quartz again. This is Caesar Stone Buttermilk, which is a beautiful kind of creamy quartz. On the floor, we went with a travertine stone. Um, the one that they utilized was a honed and filled. So it, um, it was not a pitted material, but more of a smooth finished material, more of a non-slip versus a high polish. On the vanity wall, which you'll see here in a minute, we used a concrete tile and it was a custom order. Um, we were able to dictate exactly what colors and it's a, it's a very thick tile and it was manufactured down in Miami. Um, shower heads were very important to them in terms of function and making sure to have a hand shower. So in that large of a shower, um, we typically do a fixed head and then a hand shower. And the hand shower being on a, a hose so that you have the, um, the flexibility to take it off of its holster and utilize it. I mean, some people will use it for shaving needs. Um, some people use it to clean their showers. Um, so it just gives a lot of flexibility. And most of the time we put that on an adjustable bar. So whatever user height may be using the shower um, has the ability to adjust that on a bar. Um, let's say if your kids decided to shower in there, or maybe you had it a somebody in a seat, um, in a chair, um, or an assistant, um, you know, that's helpful to have that flexibility. I always wish I had one when I have to give my dog a bath. That is like <laughs> exactly what I need. <laughs> that's another reason we do them, for sure. Yes. <laughs> so this is the after shot of that vanity, um, which is absolutely, I think, breathtaking. That is that concrete tile. So I know in this shot, it looks almost like it could be wallpaper, but it was a very thick, um, I think it, it came in either a six by six or an eight by eight uh, concrete tile. Of course, we ordered samples um, out of Miami and, and took a look at those before we made our final decision. Um, but it was something that, you know, um, the client had a vision for. You know, she wanted something unique. And um, I think it, it's just absolutely beautiful, one of a kind. Um, the furniture vanity was, um, we had ordered from our cabinet line. Um, it's a pre-finished line of cabinetry. And again, looking for something that gives both function, but also design aesthetic. So the openness at the bottom, you know, again, maybe not for everyone because sometimes we're going, okay, do I either maximize storage or do I, you know, do I do something more aesthetic? And so, you know, again, we go through that in the design phase to really identify 
what it is that we're looking for. So she utilized those baskets to still give herself some function in terms of storage. Um, but and then they have the, the six drawers as well. Um, I mentioned the Caesar stone on the countertop. Um, the, the, the mirror was a custom mirror. We used a local frame shop um, because a lot of times when we're designing these custom bathrooms, we need that mirror to be a very specific size. Sometimes we'll get lucky and find something that is already made up and ready to go, but a lot of times we're looking for um, a specific mirror, and so we utilize a, a custom frame shop. Um, you see on the right side that skylight, um, as we saw in the before photos, we also installed a wainscoting paneling material. So that is all out of wood, and that goes around the entire perimeter of the bathroom. And again, just to bring in that traditional aesthetic um, to this bathroom. This is a view in the other direction, again, where that um, former toilet room, bidet room was. This is the shower, obviously a much bigger open shower than the previous. And we do have a bench on that left side and above that bench on the left side is a recessed niche for shampoo storage. Um, it is a frameless glass shower. So meaning there is no metal surrounding the glass panels. So it's a very simple, simple, easy to clean um, shower door. You'll see the hand shower back there on the back wall next to that bench. On the right side, we did some open shelving, and then below, we did a pull-out hamper. So that hamper actually, you know, hinges, and yes, thank you, Amy, um, but, you know, functions for them so they have a place, a designated spot in that bathroom um, to put their clothes. Here's another nice shot that shows the wainscot paneling and the travertine floor. Megan, we did have a question come in actually on the, the previous bathroom at cost. Mm -hmm. And I know all costs are so different and every project is so different. Are you able to give a rough estimate on one of those smaller sure. bathrooms? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So on like a five by seven bathroom where we're going in and just completely taking it down to the studs and redoing that space, everything all new, um, electrical upgrades, plumbing upgrades, all the finished materials, you know, typically those start at about 25,000 and can go up from there. Um, that former picture was um, showing a bathroom that did have a few additional items than your kind of standard five by seven. So that one uh, may be a little bit more, but I'd say that's a, a general starting point. Thank you. Sure. And the large bathroom. Yeah. Okay. So this one's always so fun to talk about because there's a lot of space and a lot of function going on here. And I know not everybody can identify with these types of spaces. <laughs> um, but it, like I said, it's, it's certainly fun to talk about. Um, this is a North Kansas City home, um, you know, more of a 1970s build with a lot of grand spaces. Um, and so we had a lot of fun. Um, working through some design options because there was so much space that we could really do a lot of different things. Um, and sometimes we just don't have that freedom or ability. So we'll take you through, walk you through what the as built looked like, which is um, kind of crazy, but um, got the old whirlpool tub um, set up there on steps, which is not safe um, at all. And then the big aesthetic columns. Um, again, I mentioned, you know, this was a 1970s home. So in that era of time, it was all about that whirlpool jacuzzi tub. Um, and, you know, some people use them, some people don't, um, but I would say more and more, the idea is to have something, um, if you're going to have a separate tub, to have something very simple, maybe more of a soaker tub, um, and maybe not utilizing so much footprint and giving that space to the shower. So clear over on the right side, here you have this massive bathroom, and then in this little separate space, you've got a 48 by 32 shower with no natural light. So didn't really work for these clients. Um, so we knew we had some, some design work and some wishes of what was not working and, and what we could make possible. So here are the pain points for this bathroom. Didn't have enough storage. Uh, the shower was small. So in this as-built drawing up on the top, you will see that shower crammed in that small little separate room. There was a bidet, there was a toilet, and then there's our little shower way back in that um, little cabin room. <laughs> it's just so small, no natural light. Um, in the main part of the bath, um, there was a corner vanity, um, so dual sinks, and then that big massive tub. 
Um, this is on an exterior wall, so a really big window. And then there's actually a door going out to um, a deck um, off of their master, which goes down to a backyard area. Um, there was a major, um, very large walk-in closet with the door. You can see that door. So we had some doors that were um, conflicting as well. So we knew we needed to clean up some of that design. Um, obviously very dated. And then the Whirlpool tub they weren't utilizing. So the wish list on theirs was a his or hers vanity and also a large shower, but a dual shower so that they both had their own individual sides. We'll talk about that more in a minute. And then a luxury feel. Um, so, you know, again, plenty of space to work with on this one. So the new plan, um, the idea was to completely remove the entire bathroom, including all of the partition walls that were there and create a large shower again with a his and her um, specific area, a large soaking tub, and we wanted it to be a focal point as well in this bathroom, separate vanities, so his and her separate vanities, and then reducing the size of the water closet, because yes, we had plenty of room um, to, to do a separate water closet, but we didn't, um, we didn't necessarily need it to incorporate anything else other than the toilet. So selection wise, we have um, a bridge faucet, which is beautiful, again, selected for um, the design aesthetic. We utilize quartz in a line called Cambria. Um, we utilize the pre-finished cabinetry in a white finish. Um, cabinet hardware was crystal. Again, that was kind of um, the client's uh, designer touch. She wanted something very um, luxury feel. Um, we did do an acrylic tub on this freestanding tub. So it was a much lighter weight than the previous bathroom. We did a porcelain tile on the floor in a matte finish. So it is an all white. Um, and we utilize um, a little darker grout, like more of a light gray, um, just to really um, set off the design of that. Um, obviously light fixture sconces, and then in the um, after photos here in a second, you'll see to some wallpaper. Um, in this bathroom, because there was so much expanse of floor space, they really wanted to um, do a heated floor. Um, so we're showing what that heated floor system is. We do that a lot in master bathrooms. Um, it's nice because you can put the heating floor on a timer. So let's say you want it to be warm and comfortable. You can preset it so that maybe it turns on at 6 a.m. when you get ready. And then it's on for an hour and then it turns off. And then in the evening, you know you're going to get ready for bed, let's say 9 o'clock. And so it turns on again for another hour. Um, so it's a great system and it just has a really nice um, feel to it. So now you're not feeling like you have to cover up all your your cold tile with rug, um, you know, you can you can step on your floor in the morning and it feels absolutely comfortable. It's so, like the ultimate luxury. Absolutely, yes. We do this a lot in masters, especially if they're oversized. You know, if it's a five by seven and it's a very small, efficient bathroom, there's obviously not going to be a lot of opportunity. Um, but you know, in a larger master, it's it's a great um, luxury item. We love to do. These are some of the storage options we did. So you're seeing on the left side, that is her side vanity. Um, and we stacked down countertop cabinets because we wanted to maximize. I don't know if you saw in that before photo, but she tended to have a lot of product sitting out on the counter. And so one of our um, design goals was to get all of those items tucked away and hidden into the cabinetry. So we implemented countertop cabinets set down to the countertops, and then we also um, installed some outlets inside those cabinets. So now she can, you know, utilize, let's say, a plug, plug-in toothbrush or um, hair dryer, and leave those items plugged in um, and close them away when they're not in use. So before shot, or I'm sorry, after shot of that bathroom, again, that tub being um, both functional, but also I mean, beautiful as you walk in, it's a double door entry off of their master bedroom. Um, we replaced the window, so it's a new frosted glass window that offers privacy, but still keeps a lot of natural light. Um, his side is on the left, so we did a larger rain style head for him, and you'll see some storage there on the left side, some, some angled shelves. Um, and then on her side, 
she selected to do, she wanted to do a hand shower. And so that is on an adjustable bar. So again, that moves up and down um, based on what she wants the height to be set at. Um, they have individual doors, so there are two hinged doors, again, in that frameless glass design. Um, there is a bench seat on that back wall, and I think we have some more photos that you'll see that bench seat on the back wall. Yeah, so there's a good shot on the interior of that shower. So we continued that floor tile into that shower. We wanted that to be consistent all the way through, and because it's a smaller mosaic, it does allow slope to the drains. So we're able to do that in that shower as well. The bench is back there on the, on the back wall. I think that was about 40 inches wide. So it's a really nice size bench and we clipped the corners just to maximize floor space as you're standing at each of the fixture locations. We utilized um, a quartz slab for the top of that bench seat. Um, certainly it can be done in tile as well. But on a surface like that, um, it's much easier when it's a solid surface. And you can use that for shower storage as well if you want to set shampoo, um, you know, soaps, that kind of thing. So again, it's just an easier to clean um, because it has no grout. Um, on the vanity side, Amy, if you don't mind flipping back one more. Yep, thank you. That is his side. So um, his side, very efficient, but he has six drawers. He also has a counter wall stack. So he utilizes that for plug-in razor, plug-in toothbrush. So again, we did outlets in there, um, sconces near um, that same countertop material. And then you'll see there's a towel bar over there on the right side. And that door is where that toilet is located in that separate room. Another shot, and you can see a sneak peek into their bedroom, which we did as well, we renovated. Um, with new hardwoods and a new closet system and painting, lighting, all of that. So um, it's really very beautiful with that double door entry. And I had made mention that there was a walk-in closet behind her vanity and we closed in the door because we wanted to reroute um, and eliminate that traffic pattern. And so the door entry is now from the master. So it was an easy change um, that just made the bathroom now more private. Um, and we just didn't have one more door, one more circulation point going through that space. Another interior viewpoint of that shower, um, the controls, if you look on the left, that is that half wall that sits behind the tub. And so we tucked the controls for his and hers in that half wall. So the nice thing with doing that is, yes, it's hidden, but then also, when you get your shower ready, you don't have to get into the shower completely. Um, you can let it warm up. And so you just reach in, open that door, reach in, turn on the faucet. And then when that shower is ready, you can hop in. Um, again, I mentioned the, the bench with the quart slab on top. We did utilize the same mosaic that we did on the floors up on the, the wall surface, just as a detail um, and as an accent panel. Um, the frosted glass window in a linear size. It was a really nice big size there to let a lot of natural light in. And then her side, the adjustable handheld, which serves as both a handheld and a shower head. So it's a multi-function head. So I believe this one had five settings, which is really nice. Um, so you can use it, it's, it's a dual function. It can be used as a primary head and then also it unclips and you can use it as um, a handheld as well. 